Today on Tricro Studios, we ask the question that I've been asked by numerous people since picking up this amp over here, and that is, how bad is it with the PV Valve King 100 Mark One? So first and foremost, I have to say, this is not a bad amp by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't consider it like a main amp candidate, but it's definitely a great amp to have in your arsenal. So let's talk about specs very quickly. We'll also go over some sound samples, uh, some AB sound samples with some of the features that the amp has, and then a little later we'll go over some different sound samples. But we have uh, four 6L6 tubes in here, and it is a two channel amp. So we have the clean channel here that has a bright switch attached to it. And then for the lead channel, we have a volume boost and a gain boost on here. Um, the volume boost will obviously make things a little louder. Uh, you can kind of consider it like as a solo um, switch. And the uh, gain boost, I kind of more liken it to like a gain type switch. So the gain type, uh, if it's in the out position, so like off, that kind of can give you like a little more classic rock um, type of a gain. Whereas if you have it uh, pressed in, uh, basically it turns the gain knob here, any, anything that pass like 830, it brings it right into metal territory. So, um, that is definitely one of the uh, great features of this amp if you're looking for that type of a sound. We also have a reverb control. Now, the reverb that is on here is a typical PV reverb, uh, except for the classic 50 that I used to own. That reverb was fantastic. However, this reverb that is built into this amp, uh, I would liken it to, I had like a PV 112 uh, when I was first starting out, it might have been a 212, I can't remember anymore. I think it was a 112. But this is basically the same lifeless reverb that's in here. So it's a great option to have, um, but it, it's a lifeless, dull reverb. Uh, we also have presence and resonance controls on here, which is fantastic. And something that I really enjoy that PV usually includes on their amps. And as well, uh, one thing that I've been asked by a lot of people is what's up with the two inputs. So input one uh, is just like a regular input. Um, and input two is more for like, you know, like your active pickups, anything that has a lot, like very, very hot pickups that may actually uh, break up the signal before you want it to. So it's got like a 10 dB pad built into it. All right, so let's listen to um, the bright switch on the clean channel, the volume boost on the lead channel, but I'm going to volume correct it a little bit. Um, and then the gain boost on the lead channel. And then we will look at an AB of the other feature that I didn't mention here, which is in the rear of the PV uh, Valve King, there's a texture knob. So it'll actually switch it from a class A to a class AB. So class A will break up a little quicker. Uh, class AB won't. There's a little more low end I find to the AB, uh, whereas you really can hear it break up, um, like in the root notes uh, in the sample that I play, you can kind of hear it break up and there's a little more mid to high end in it.
now that we've heard the AB kind of comparisons on the features, here's just four different sound samples. Um, so a Fender uh, mild gain breakup, a Gretsch mild gain breakup, a Les Paul, uh, I like to call it Joe Walsh, um, fake Joe Walsh type of rock, and then an Explorer that's actually playing metal.
So there you go. There are all the sound samples, the breakdown of the a quick breakdown of the uh, specs. But I do want to talk really quickly on um, my reactions and my thoughts on this amp. So I think it's uh, a great alternative to like 5150 or 6505 plus. It doesn't exactly do um, what those amps do, but it kind of comes close, I think. <clears throat> uh, the low end, if you're playing um, like full on metal or anything like that, the low end can be a little tricky. <clears throat> Um, in the room, it's great when you're kind of dialing in a little more low end on it, a little more resonance. Very pleasing and very pleasing in a headphone mix. However, uh, if you are recording with this amp, I do recommend dialing back the low end a little bit because what will end up happening is um, during the conversion, like when you're mixing down and everything like that, um, when you get into your final track, uh, I find it can, not brick wall, but it can kind of peak, even though it's not really peaking. It, it can give that um, impression that it's peaking, and uh, it'll come through that there's a little too much low end. So, great in the room, great in the band mix, it, it, it actually can uh, kind of cut through <clears throat> uh, and can give a little more um, emphasis and oomph uh, to your sound versus where the bass and the bass drummer are sitting. Um, but a little tricky when it comes to recording and mixing down, if that makes any sense, because there's, you know what I mean. Anyway, that's really all I have to say here. Um, it's a great amp. I'm very happy that I have it along with all of my other tube amps, and uh, I say good day.